everybody. Today we have a book haul. Okay, it's the book haul video that we keep saying we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. but we haven't for a while done a video because it was Caitlin's 21st and it was my graduation. It was. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. She got a first. Yay. She graduated. And we've got new mugs. We do. I got them off Amazon. She got them for my birthday. Isn't that the cutest thing? We've got a lot of books. Yeah, we are going to do a part two of this haul as well, aren't we? Yeah, a more general shopping haul. Yesterday I went into a bookshop <clears throat> and it's got three floors. In one stand in a quarter of the bookshop on the smallest floor, I bought six books <laughs> and I didn't go anywhere else. Imagine if I'd been sat It's loose. worth it. Like, I don't mind spending loads of money in a bookshop. <clears throat> like, if I buy a load of clothes or something, mm. I feel a bit bad. Yeah, because you can't like, outgrow them and stuff, aren't you? Like... I feel like you learn when you read those, so it's exactly, more justifiable like, in a way. Okay, where do we start? Start with stationery sort of things. Okay, we're gonna put that can in I it. just say, I did buy more books than this, but I didn't bring them all because we're at Caitlin's house. Okay, first it's a notepad, before we do that, from a bookshop. And it is 642 things to write about. Um, and I got this because it's really cute and it's got like all different sections to say what you can write about. And I thought this would be good because I did kind of a creative writing course at university and I kind of need motivation to keep writing because sometimes Definitely, I I'm get the same. really lazy. And this will prompt me. It's a few years ago for Christmas because I was interested in doing so it at cute. uni. I love it. I love it. And it's by the San Francisco Writers Grotto. Which I love the name of. <laughs> oh I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is from Waterstone. Mm. Yeah, because they, they buy them. But we're not sponsored. No, we <laughs> Imagine if we were We wish. <laughs> Please sponsor us. Like, mm, mm. even if it was just like to borrow a book and then send okay. it back. We'll do one. I'll do one in the video. Oh, how much was it? 11 oh, yeah, 11.99. Worth it. I got from Wilco's, it's a photo rope kit, so it's got like rope and like Polaroid hanging and I got a Polaroid camera for my birthday. That's cute. Yeah, and it was only uh, £1.50. This is also from Wilco's and um, it was £1.50 and it's just a little mini colouring book with flowers and stuff. Um, next I got this and it was £2.75, it's a meal planner and it's got um, a magnet on the back so you can put it on your fridge. So yeah, you can just like plan your meals. Oh, um, yeah. Shopping list. It has like one to six of water, so you can say how many like glasses like of water you drank. Pizza <laughs> takeaway. Yeah, literally. Yeah. And then exercise, so you can keep track of your exercise. I just thought that was a really That's good way good. to like keep up I like how small today. the exercise box. Because <laughs> yeah. we're injured, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Just hit our legs. We both have to go to physio. Yeah, we have to. I went for a run two months ago for twenty minutes, and now I need physio. Yeah, I went to work for a few hours. <laughs> Oh, I just dab that. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting, it's getting great. Um, and then I got this, which is a to-do list. And these are also magnets, which I didn't realise. That's cool. But then it's got um, a to-do list on this side and then an important things list on this side. And I just think I want to keep more track of her things. It, I sometimes it. you know when you have a really good notebook and you don't want to write in it in case you? you ruin it. Show oh. the camera. Oh yeah. Show so the good people of YouTube. The two Harry Potter notebooks, which Holly got me. And I'm I love like, all I things Harry Potter, but don't we all? Now we're moving on to the books. <sighs> oh my god, I'm so excited. We love books. And I went in one since the other day and I just felt like all this emotion. Like, I was like crying and I was like, it's because I love books so much. Start with that one because it's a little one. I okay. got her this. Yep, Holly got it me for my birthday. I thought it was funny. I love these lady, lady bird book books. I just saw it in it. I think it was a garden centre. Really? That's <laughs> like, so cute. This is funny. Can I just talk about lack of bookshelf space and the problems it's causing? Oh my god. Yeah. It's so annoying. I, I want a bookshelf. Extension. That was my bookshelf and I have not enough room. Yeah. Um, so in one of my bookshop visits, I got Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Oh, I want to read that. Classic. It's on my Goodreads. I, these aren't my favourite covers, but I found myself... Oh, that's quite nice. And, but for some reason, this just ended up being what I... I think I got some, a few for Christmas. So now I sort of collect these ones. I'm kind of going through a phase of trying to read the classics. Like I'm yeah. reading Sense and Sensibility at the moment. Oh, and I like read that. Pride and Prejudice. I love Pride and Prejudice. It's I haven't amazing. read it. It is really good. I've got it. I'm saving it. It took I'm... me a few chapters to get into it, but well, now I'm like Jane, Eyre, Jane Eyre takes a few chapters. Yeah, I think Wuthering Heights does as well. I haven't read that, but it's on my to read. List. I think it's just getting used to the style. You know, you got an itch. You know. Yeah, I've got one yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
so this is Caitlin's coffee, <laughs> but we both have the same book. Yeah, we both bought it. We didn't, even, both. we didn't even talk about it, did we? We mm. just ended up buying the same book. Mm, yeah. This is Italian, you know. Okay. In the UK, there's not as many like translation books that, that we read. And, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think, you know, it's me an interesting one. So this is about... To read the blurb. Okay, 1978. Is that Ponte? Oh, I think so, yeah. A small community in northern Italy, an unbearably hot summer like many others. Ella Fiorenti. Is 16. Um. Living an <laughs> unremarkable life of moderate unhappiness until the day the beautiful, damaged Anna returns to Ponte and firmly propels Elia to the edge of adulthood. But then everything starts to unravel. Elia's father, Etoire, so you say that? I think so, yeah. Is let go from his job and loses himself in the darkest corners of his mind. A young boy is murdered and a girl climbs into a van and vanishes in the deep, dark woods. I'm, when I read the blurb, I was like, what? It's going to be interesting, what? huh? You think it's going to be like, I feel like they're both girls and it's like a lesbian, like... I've just realised, yeah. But then it's like, uh, someone's murdered, a girl goes missing, like, what? Like, what is this? And it's called, Can You Hear Me? So we've not read that one yet. Mm. Next, Call Me By Your Name. Isn't there a film of that yeah, as well? Yeah, I watched it. I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to read it. I'm on like page 52, so I got that. Did you say what that's? During a restless summer on the Italian Riviera, a powerful romance blooms between 17-year-old Elio and his father's house guest, Oliver. Unrelenting currents of obsession and fear, fascination and desire threaten to overwhelm the lovers who at first feign indifference to their... <laughs> you laughed at me then, didn't you? No. Feign indifference to the charge between them. What grows from the depths of their souls is a romance of scarcely six weeks duration and an experience that marks them for a lifetime. For what the two discover on the Riviera and during a sultry evening in Rome is the one thing they both already fear that may never truly find again. Total intimacy. Oh, it's a beautiful story. This next one is another one that we both have and this is Caitlin's copy. <laughs> um, I like the cover. Yeah. Because it's like... People say don't judge a book by its cover but they obviously invite you to read the blurb. I think there have been comparisons here to The Handmaid's Tale. Oh, um, really? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, watch the um, adaptation that's on at the moment like on TV. It's, it's, so, it. it's such a good adaptation. Like It's harrowing but it's like a really good adaptation. So this is, it just says, okay, all over the world women are discovering that, sorry, discovering they have the power. With a flick of the fingers they can inflict terrible pain, even death. Suddenly every man on the planet finds they've lost control. The day of the girls has arrived, but where will it end? So what's it's like it about? feminism. Yes. I don't know, but I, yes, it sounds really good and I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued about that. I'm excited to read that. Oh, you didn't say the authors either. We're so bad at this. Okay, so... Rewind! <laughs> this is by Eleanor Varvello. This is by Andre Ackerman. And this is Aston. Naomi Alderman. Okay, so this is um, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. Um, I'm probably butchering that so much, but I will. Sorry I for any mispronunciation. Yeah. Pronunciation. Um, so, fire gave us power, farming made us hungry for more, money gave us purpose, science made us deadly. This is the thrilling account of our extraordinary history from insignificant apes to rulers of the world. Barack Obama's read it and he said, interesting and provocative, it gives you a sense of perspective on how briefly we've been on this earth. So is it like non-fiction? Yeah, it's non-fiction, I think. <laughs> Holly's in awe of the fingerprint. <laughs> A fun should I say? But isn't that interesting? Is it? You'll have to read it after me. I always like to read like a scan of the first page, you know. Yeah, to see if you like the writing style and stuff like that as well. Okay, this next one. Uh, oh, I want this. I got it recently, but I've already read it. It is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. My Gail Honeyman, and this has been like a big thing like, yeah. at the moment. Like I nearly everyone... bought it, but I didn't. I don't know what stopped me. So, Eleanor Oliphant leads a simple life. She wears the same clothes to work every day, eats the same meal deal for lunch every day, and buys the same two bottles of vodka to drink every weekend. Eleanor Oliphant is happy. Nothing is missing from her carefully timetabled existence, except sometimes everything. My mum told me to read this because she read it. Now, my mum, like, she... Oh, I saw. Books oh so dog-eared, like she borrowed the book from a friend, and by the end, it was in 
no fit Oh my stain. god, she sent me a picture, it was hilarious. It was so dogged. And then um, she, she dropped it in some water as well, and then she tried to iron it. <laughs> It was just, I got really You disturbed. said like videos, didn't you? Her and I just said you cannot return it like that. So I bought a copy for her to give to a friend. And I bought myself a copy as well because I like to have my own book on the yeah. book. Costa Book Awards winner 2017. Uh, to be honest, like at first I wasn't really into it. I wasn't really sure. It was a bit strange. It felt a bit strange. I couldn't really figure out what was going on. But then in the end I did like it. And it was good. Mm, we'll do, I'll read so it I and would, then we'll do a review. Yeah, I would recommend it. We'll okay, the next one I got was um, Skag Boys by Irvine Welsh. And Irvine or Irvine, sorry. And it's, you know, Train Spotting. Yeah, I've not seen that. Train oh, oh, it's. Is it a book as well? No. It was originally a book, yeah, and it's, it, this is the first book. Um, Most films were a book. Yeah, a lot. Mark Renton has it all. He's good looking, young, with a pretty girlfriend and a bright future. But there's no room for him in the 1980s, and when his family starts to fracture, Mark's life swings out of control. The way out is heroin. It's no better for his friends. Spud Murphy is laid off from his job. Tommy Lawrence finds himself sucked in, um, into a life of petty crime. Violence in the world of um, the psychotic Franco Begbie. Only sick boy seems to ride the current, scamming and hustling his way through it all. Exhilarating and moving, Skag boys charts their journey from likely lads to young addicts in a, in a decade... Um, which changed Britain forever because it's set in Edinburgh and the heroin like it was really bad. Don't do drugs. That's like the first book in the like I think there's two books and I'm really interested because I love I the film. I don't feel like it appeals to me but but the film you need to watch the film. Yeah I want to watch the film. This is another one that I bought recently and have read. Oh, I want to read Let that. Let me just smell. Right, I, I really want to read that. Is I it can good? tell this is Harper Collins by the smell. <laughs> Harper Collins? It's yeah, it has a distinctive... Oh, I'll get it for Christie. Yeah, but the publisher. Oh, right, like, yeah. It has a distinctive smell. You know, yeah, it does. You know you're a bit worse. It does compared <laughs> to Penguin and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so this was really good. I've never read an Agatha Christie um, book before. It's well, a Murder on the Orient it. Express. And then that one on is supposed to be really good. Yeah, I really want to read that. But I'm not... Because I haven't seen the film. I haven't so, either, but I really yeah, want to. I was holding on because I wanted to... Read the book. That's what I was saying. I thought it's probably going to be better. I'll have to read it. Yeah. Was um, it a quick read? Yeah, I read it quite quickly. I think she's just really clever. I guess a Christie. And yeah, it was good. I would recommend. I'm excited. Oh, do I need to read the back? Just Wait. after midnight, the famous Orient Express is stopped in its tracks by a snowdrift. A passenger lies dead in his compartment, stabbed a dozen times, his door locked from the inside. Isolated by the storm and with a killer in their midst, Detective. Hercule Poirot must identify the prime suspect from a scornful and impatient array of passengers before the murderer decides to strike again! Oh my god, it's not so good. Okay, next I got um, Heartburn by Nora Ephron. And um, no one likes Heartburn. Oh no, I've had it today. It really it's hard. not like... And I, for one, this was on like, you know, the stand, like Book of the Week. Oh yeah. Um, but I thought, and I know, don't judge a book by its cover, whatever, but like, it was a beautiful book. That is pretty. Do you think it's hard to pick a book sometimes? When you think of how many books there are. Oh yeah. Gonna... But this is seven months into her pregnancy, <clears throat> Rachel, a cookery writer, discovers that her husband is in love with another woman. The fact that the woman um, has a neck as long as an arm and a nose as long as a thumb is no consolation. Heartburn is a roller coaster of love, betrayal, revenge, and how to make the perfect souffle. And then it says Nora Ephron shows us the pen is mightier than the sword in this rom uh, cleft. Um, I always thought during the pain of the marriage that one day it would make a funny book, Ephron once said, and it is. So it's a true story. I think it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. I got this for Caitlin. Yeah. She got me this. Um, it's the Tracy Beaker quiz book. <laughs> <laughs> so what more do we need to say about that? <laughs> it's okay. my birthday. So again, I've read this, um, and I got it You've recently. You've haven't you? No, not this. This is on Chesil Beach. Um, at university, I read like an extract of it <coughs> in class. Oh, I remember that, actually. Yeah, and um, I don't know. And then I saw it like in Waterstones, and I knew it was made into a film, which I haven't seen yet. Who's in it? And I thought it sounded quite interesting. Oh, Sasha Ronan. Yeah. But it was actually really good. Like, it, I didn't think I'd enjoy it as much as I did. Yeah. And again, I read it really quickly. Like, it's, oh. it's quite a short one. It's just quite good. Like, it makes you think. So, yeah. It's by. It's on Trestle Beach by Ian McEwen. Do you want me to read the blurb? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it is July 1962. 
all of the 60s. Edward and Florence, young innocents married that morning, arrive at a hotel on the Dorset coast. At dinner in their rooms, they struggle to suppress their private fears of the wedding night to come, and unbeknownst to them both, the events of the evening will haunt them for the rest of their lives. Yeah, I think it's just good how he kind of, he kind of see from both sides yeah. of the story what's going on. Okay, next I got Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, you know, this is like a modern classic. Prisoner of War, optometrist, um, optometrist, sorry, time traveller. These are the life roles of Billy Pilgrim, hero of this miraculously moving, bitter and funny story of innocence faced with apocalypse. Slaughterhouse Five is one of the world's greatest anti-war books. Centering in, um, in famous firebombing of Dresden in the Second World War, Billy Pil Pilgrim's odyssey through time reflects the journey of our own fractured lives as we search for meaning in what we are afraid to know. So yeah. That was interesting. Um, and then I also got, which my boyfriend's reading at the moment, Stephen King Misery. Stephen King's his favourite author. Um, we watched the film with Kathy Bates. Um, we it. watched it the other month like, with my nana, and it was so good, so I want to read the book. Is it scary? It's really good, though. Um, Misery Chastain is dead. Paul Sheldon has just killed her. With relief, with joy. Misery made him rich. She was the heroine of a string of bestsellers, and now he wants to get on to some real writing. So, he killed her because he's the, an author. That's when the car accident happens, and he wakes up in pain in a strange bed. But it isn't hospital. Annie Wilkes has pulled him from the wreck, brought him to her remote mountain home, splinted and set his mangled legs. The good news is that Annie was a nurse and has painkilling drugs. The bad news is, is that she has been... Paul, along being Paul's number one fan. And when she finds out what Paul has done to Misery, she doesn't like it. She doesn't like it at all. Oh my god, I need to read that. Because I read um, Stephen King on writing, and I think he... Mike's read that, yeah. ...mentioned it, yeah. Feeny. It was so good. The film is, anyway. The next one, and I haven't read this yet. Oh, that's... Have you seen the film? No. Oh, it's so good. No, it's I love that film. It's One Day by David Nichols. Uh, it says, you can live your whole life not realising that what you're looking for is right in front of you. 15th of July 1988, Emmett and Dexter meet on the night of their graduation. Tomorrow they must go with their separate ways. So where will they be on this one day next year? And the year after that, and every year that follows. It's such... Have you not seen the film? No, don't tell me what happened. Okay, but right. well, when you've read that book, we're watching the film, okay? Because, okay. like, it's beautiful. It's Anne Hathaway and then Jim Have you read the Sturgis. book? No, but I've got the film on DVD. I love it. Okay, next I got The Bees by... um it's a funky cover. Laleen Paul. Um, this book really intrigues me. Yeah. Um, it says, Accept, obey, serve. Flora 717 is a survivor. Born into the lowest class of the totalarian hive society, she is prepared to sacrifice everything for the queen. Surviving internal massacres, religious purges and terrifying invasions by vicious wasps. With each act of bravery, her status grows, revealing both the enemies within and the sinister secrets that rule the hive. But when her instinct to serve is overwhelmed by a fierce and deeply forbidden maternal love, she breaks the most sacred law of all. And at first, what intrigued me is because I was like, is this like, um, actually... Is the character actually a bee? Or is it like a dystopian feminism? Like, mm. like you know, like women are referred to and like they're in highs and stuff. Is it dystopian? Or is it um, actually bees? And I'm excited to find out. That's interesting. Or maybe I'll never find out. Maybe it won't ever be obvious and it will always be like up to my interpretation. The next one is <clears throat> How to Stop Time by Matt Haig, I think that's how you say it. I yeah. first noticed this book because my stepdad was reading it. And it just seems really interesting. So, it says, how many lifetimes does it take to learn how to live? Tom Hazard, is it Hazard? has a dangerous secret. He may look like an ordinary 41-year-old history teacher, but he's been alive for centuries. Ooh. Like Doctor Who. <gasps> oh, can I just have oh, so excited? Because I, got, I didn't bring it with me, but I got a Doctor Who magazine yesterday, because it's got Jodie Whittaker on the front. Oh, yeah, I saw, oh, yeah. Heart. But he's been alive for centuries, from Elizabethan England to Jazz Age Paris, from New York to the South Seas. Tom has seen it all. As long as he keeps changing his identity, he can stay one step ahead of his past and stay alive. The only thing he must 
not do is fall in love. This sounds a bit like that film I saw a few years ago. It sounds like Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> like a more like <laughs> older version. Okay, so the next book I got was The Greek Myths by Robert, Robert Graves. Oh. And I just, I always buy Greek mythology books from um, bookshops. I've got like a collection. Yeah. I like, like them. That's cool. So I'm excited to read this one because I just love like because like everyone interprets them different interpret uh, interprets them differently. So I'm not gonna okay. read the blurb for that. Cause it's, this one. Oh, sorry. Sorry. This one. Sorry. The reason I'm really got excited <laughs> is because it's an introduction by Rick Riordan, who is the author of Percy Jackson, and I love I him. I've seen that. It's read, it. read. Read it. I don't care if it's kids, but you need to read it. This I got from some random shop. It's called Five Hundred Words You Should Know. Hmm. Oh. And it's just got book like words. I love words. <laughs> Stop. Stop. I don't know how to say that. Logess. Logess. It should have a pronunciation thing next to it. Generosity. Often in handing out money on a special occasion, but also in bestowing gifts or favours. So like yeah, it. let's get educated yeah. with these words. Woo! Okay. And then I have a lot more books at home that I didn't bring here today. I'm sorry. Why well, was that your last one? Hi. This one is called Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. And the white people is written in white. Yeah. Um, and it's by Reni Edologe. I don't know why I said that in French. I don't think she's But it French. sounded good. Thank you. <laughs> Reni Edologe. How have you... Sorry again, I've butchered it. But it says, the book that sparked a national conversation. Exploring everything from eradicated black history to the inextric um, inextricable link between class and race. Why I'm no longer talking to white people about race is the essential handbook for anyone who wants to understand race relations in Britain today. Interesting. So then that's non-fiction as well. Um, okay, so the next book I got was Margaret Atwood's Elias Grace. I want to read this. Yeah. And that's just been made into like a Netflix series, I think, which is apparently really good. Um, so obviously I, we both read The Handmaid's Tale last year, didn't we? Um, I read it in... Um... In college. I did, yeah. Oh, I read it last year for uni. Oh, it's scary, isn't it? I oh, I read it, reread it for uni as well. Yeah. Because it does like an essay on it. Yeah, same. We both did the same essay. Yeah, but same question. So sometimes I whisper it over to myself, murderous, murderous. It rustles like a taffeta skirt along the floor. Around the true story of one of the most enigmatic and notorious women of the 1840s, Margaret Atwood, Atwood has created an extraordinarily um, potent tale of sexuality, cruelty, and mystery. And that extract you said just then at the top sound, had like a handmade to tell feel to it. It really did, didn't it? Okay, the next one is the tenant of, is it Wildfell or Wildfell? I don't know. Of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. So this, <gasps> this sensational, hard-hitting, and passionate tale of marital cruelty sees a mysterious new tenant at Wildfell Hall. Sorry, Sorry the camera that. went off again. High temperature. Okay, so the next book that I got was Shockaholic by Carrie Fisher. Mm, I've heard of that. It says, bad news. For anyone who thought Carrie Fisher had finally stopped talking about herself, sorry, but it appears she has yet another brand new problem to overshare it about. They don't expect to relate to it. This time, the electroconvulsive shock therapy she's been regularly have undergoing and um, treating to wipe out, what, uh, threatening to wipe out what's, rest of her, the, the what's left of her memory. But get ready for a shock of your own. Not only doesn't she mind paying the second electric bill, but she loves the high voltage treatments. She can't get enough. In fact, this might even be a brand new addiction for her. Which is why she's having them in the first place. But before she oh. can really truly commit herself to it in the long term, she'd better get some of those more nagging memories of hers on paper. Why? Because she wants you to someday be able to remind her about how Elizabeth Taylor settles a score um, and the scatological wonders of shoe tycoons. She doesn't want to forget about how she and Michael Jackson became friends, or how she ended up spiralling none other than Ted Kennedy on a dinner date. I thought it was such a tongue the Ted Kennedy on a dinner date. <laughs> and she especially wants to preserve her memories of Eddie Fisher, what their relationship really was, and the beautiful story it turned out to be in the end. Yes, of it's course. Horrible. Shockaholic is laugh out loud funny, um, acerbic and witty as hell, but it also reveals a new side of Carrie Fisher that may even bring a pleasant shock your way. It is contemplative, vulnerable, and ultimately quite tender. I don't think I want to read it, but... And it's just because it was on two for £5, and I thought it was interesting, and obviously, like... Next. A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. So, A Visit from the Goon Squad vividly captures the moments where lives interact and where the fortunes ebb and flow. 
Aegon depicts an elegant, um, with elegant prospect, prose, and often heart-wrenching simplicity. The sad consequences for those who couldn't fake it during their wild youth. Madness, suicide, or prison. In this captivating, wryly humorous story of temptation and loss. The Great God Pan, Arthur Macken. Include, oh, so this is like his his most famous work, mm -hmm. and it's been hailed by Stephen King as one of the best horror stories ever written, as well as other, as well as three other tales of strange drugs, ritual murder, and a young girl initiated into the old ways of pagan magic. And this is Caitlin's book again. Mm. And then these are the ones that I bought yesterday. So we've got Reservoir 13 by John McGregor. I've heard of that. I've heard of that. <laughs> um, Midwinter in the early years of this century, a teenage girl on holiday has gone missing in the hills at the heart of England. The villagers are called up to join them in the search, finding out across the moors as the police set up roadblocks and a crowd of news reporters descends on their usually quiet home. The search for the missing girl goes on, but so does everyday life, as it must. An extraordinary novel of cumulative power and grace, Reservoir 13 explores the rhythms of the natural world and the repeated human gift of violence, unfolding over 13 years as the aftershocks of a stranger's tragedy refuse to subside. Interesting. History of Wolves, Emily Fridlund. Is that Fridlund. it? 14 year old Linda lives with her parents in an ex commune beside a lake in the beautiful, austere backwoods of northern Minnesota. Isolated at home and an outsider at school, She's mostly left to her own devices. So when a young family, mother, father and their little boy Paul, move, little boy Paul. <laughs> move into the cabin across the lake, Linda insinuates her way into their orbit, yet something isn't right. Joining a secret she doesn't understand, Linda must make a choice that will affect the rest of her life. This is another Greek uh, myth book. Mythos, the Greek mystery told. No one loves and quarrels, desires and deceives as boldly or brilliantly as Greek gods and goddesses. In Stephen Fry's vivid retelling, we gaze and wonder as wise Athena is born from the cracking open of the great head of Zeus and follow Doom Persephone into the dark and lonely realm of the underworld. We shiver when Pandora opens her jar of evil torment and watch with joy as a legendary love affair between Eros and Psyche. So I say it unfolds. Yeah. This sounds good, I want to read this. The Name of the Family by Sarah Dunant. And it doesn't, I couldn't find a blurb anywhere, but um, I just read all the reviews. Like, you know, like the bombs on the back and stuff. Let's get some water. All right. Yeah, it's just about like Renaissance Italy. It's like a fiction, historical fiction. And I love history. The next one, um, recommended to me. So it was a great summer read and it's called The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. And it says, if you knew the date of your death, how would you live your life? <gasps> no, that'd be scary. In 19, it's 1969 and holed up in a grimy tenement building in New York's Lower East Side is a travelling psychic who claims to be able to tell anyone the date they will die. <gasps> the four gold children, too young for what they're about to hear, sneak out to learn their fortunes. Such prophecies could be dismissed as trickery and nonsense, yet the golds bury theirs deep. Over the years that followed, they might attempt to ignore, embrace, cheat or defy the knowledge given to them that day, but it will shape the course of their lives forever. That one sounds really good. Doesn't it? The cover's I like that blue. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, one more, the last one. And this was also recommended. So this one's called Lullaby by Leela Slemony. Um, Slemony? Translated by Sam Taylor, so it's a translation. And on the front it says, the baby is dead. It only took a few, um, it took only a few seconds on the back. When Miriam decides to return to work, she and her husband look for a nanny for their two young children. They find their dream candidate, Louise, a quiet, polite and devoted woman who sings to their children, cleans the family's chic Paris apartment, stays late without complaint and hosts enviable birthday parties. But as the couple and their nanny become increasingly dependent on each other, jealousy, resentment and suspicion start to breed and Miriam and Paul's idyllic um, domesticity is shattered. But the baby is dead, it took only, it's a thriller. That's it. That's the book. Yeah, I did have Norse mythology as well. It's not all the books, but it is quite considerable yeah, amount of so books. Yeah, so in this next bit of the shopping, because we didn't get as much like other shopping, we'll do yeah. the, the rest of the books that we got. So thanks for watching and subscribe. Yes, and down comment, down. recommend, <laughs> like, like it, please. And recommend some books, yeah. that'd be good, please. <laughs>